Hello everyone, and welcome back to Echoes of Mana. Okay, so in the last episode we did part one of an event, and now we're going to do part two. Before I do that though, we should probably top up our energy, because I am recording this immediately after that one. Yeah, that'll do. <laughs> okay, back to full. Alright, um... I was going to show you some stuff, but we might just finish the event first. I'll look at the stuff after. That way it's like a treat. <laughs> Even for me. Okay, Siren Arc. Bone and Brimstone. Okay, uh, don't look. <sighs> Would be nice if that wouldn't frickin' lag, just, oh my god. I tried to move that faster, but it's just... Yeah, it loads like a piece of shit. Honestly, really does. Okay, this looks like a longer chapter, so... Oof. Storyteller's interlude. This music really feels, uh... Undertale-y. I think that's probably a good thing, because Undertale does have great music, but I never really noticed, like, a overlap, you know, between them and Mana. But I guess Toby Fox did, uh, love, um, Konnichiwa. the Mother games. Good day. Watashi I'm Pukil, the, tori the storyteller. The Tori Stella. <laughs> have you come to hear the rest of my tale? Mm. Allow me to refresh your memory, in case the details elude you. <laughs> when last we left off, the Siren L and her, mer her mermaid friend Flemshi have found themselves in a pre precarious predicament. For L had stopped singing entirely, causing her wings to wither away with each passing hour. Seeing her friend's wings in such a state, Flemshi searched high and low for a flower or a song that might restore them. Friends, we're going with that angle, huh? <laughs> She travelled to Fig Ice Snowfields and retrieved the short-lived icicle flower. She boarded a pirate ship and rescued a poet of love, skilled in both verse and song. And yet, despite all her efforts, neither flower nor song were enough to stave off the encroaching decay of her songless friend's wings. Not to be deterred, the mermaid appeared to be once again buying flowers in the harbour town, and thus our f story resumes. Just say they're in love, man. It's pretty clear. <sighs> It's like all those old uh, photos and stuff you see of like uh, people that used to uh, be in like World War One and Two, but like women and stuff like that, and they're just friends that live together until they're eighty. That's what it is. Yeah, sure. Whatever you need to tell yourself. Weird people who can't just accept people for who they are. <laughs> Bone and Brimstone, here we go. Oh my god, it's a Shadol! Again, I skipped all of the uh, story when I did it. And I think I did this like a month ago, man. So like, hell yeah, man, a Shadol? That's related to a... Oh man, I'm starting to get real tired. <laughs> that's related to the dude that's like the one of the Wisdoms of Mana that's the Shade one. Hey, mermaid, you seen any ghosts around these parts? <sighs> this again? It's been the talk of the town lately, a spectre shambling around muttering to itself. Even the flowerling just now wouldn't shut up about it. Said, a ghost visited me the other day, but didn't buy a thing. Huh? Anyway, who are you? Oh, you must have never died before if you don't know who we are. I mean, isn't that the norm? <laughs> 
We are Shadows, happy helpers of the underworld. Meaning it's our job to round up any stray ghosts and drag them back. Sounds like a you problem. Good luck with that. Hey, if you see any ghosts, bring them to us. The dead have a soft spot for funeral flowers, you know. As if. Besides, these are for my friend, not the dead. <laughs> Suit yourself. A ghost. Yes, it's all anyone's talking about in town. Don't they know they don't exist? That poor ghost, I can't imagine wandering aimlessly after death, not at peace. Perhaps it'd be comforted by these flowers you gave me. You're right, instead of hauling tail every time I get you flowers, I'd be much better off giving them to some miserable ghost. What? Flamshi? You know that's not what I... Forget it, if you don't want them, give them back. I don't care anymore. Hey! Flamshi, I'm sorry. You worked so hard to help me. And I took it all for granted. I'm nothing like the sirens you look up to. I'm even less of a good friend. Oh. Trouble in paradise. In paradise. <laughs> Damn. Jeez, what would uh, L be? She's like a... I know they're calling her a siren, but uh... It's like a bird person made of flowers? Can we just do ghost of gossip? Let me just check. If it starts out as the same stuff, I'll just skip. And look, there's been a couple of events as well, but they're like whale events that don't have a lot of story. Yeah, all we need to do is see if it was the same chapter. Yep. Which means we're up to the third part. Ah, uh, yes. See, I've been awake for like 20 hours now. I'm getting pretty tired. We're going to record this whole episode and then I'm going to go for a five kilometer walk to the shops. <laughs> and then I'll come back and record a third episode and then sleep. <laughs> if only like YouTube didn't like hide half of our content. All right. Hide 90% of our content most of the time. Like I'd be able to afford to hire an editor, but I do the editing and I don't do a great job. <laughs> I only understand basic editing. Oh, well, video editing. I'm more of an image editor. I can't believe her. She doesn't get me at all. She's always been this way. So fragile and stubborn to a fault. Always putting others first, not caring one bit about herself. <laughs> but that's just who she is. Hmm? Who's that over there? The scent of flowers. So close. Shambling around, muttering. Could that be the rumored ghost? It's looking for flowers, huh? Hey you, if you want flowers so badly, you can have them. You can wander for eternity for all I care, but my friend wanted you to have these. What? If you're going to thank me, thank Elle instead. And if you're looking for the underworld, the shadows... At last, I have found it. Wow, you must have really wanted some flowers. Huh, good for you. I have no need for flowers. Hey, careful with those. W what are you doing? Come now, cross over to our domain. If you weren't after flowers, does that mean you're after me? Yes, little mermaid, at last I have found you. Your majesty, O oh Deathbringer. Behold, I fulfilled the Imperial Order and secured the mermaid. What are you... Have you lost your gills? There's no way I'm handing over these flowers or myself for that matter. Ooh, it's getting... Juicy.
Man, that's all just like the starter for the chapter. We haven't even actually fought any battles yet, and we're like getting into the episode. Oh man, I do love these little crab dudes. I feel like that's also another big thing. Like, I like the Secret of Mana remake. I do. In a lot of ways, I feel like it elaborated on its own art style, but in other ways, it changed stuff, and I don't think it's for the better. Like, I liked the cartooniness. It was always meant to be like that. That's what separated it from other RPGs. If I wanted something, like, super serious, well, that's why I played things like the Secret of Evermore instead of it, you know? Like, there are options, but, like, the cute little fish people... The cute little crab people. Actually, I don't think they're crab people. I think they're just crabs. But either way, they are cute. Like, they changed them a bit. Like, look at them. That's the crabs, the crab people I remember and the Marmadukes. Like, to be fair, the Marmadukes are the same secret amount of remake. But yeah. The crabs are, like, chonkier. I don't know. It's a strange thing to make a design change when you've already got, like, eight games out using that design. You know what I mean? Like... Elaborate, that's fine. I love what they did with the designs of uh, all of the elemental spirits. That's elaboration. That's great. I like uh, the the end scenes where the characters are talking to each other. Elaboration, great. I like uh, how they fleshed out characters' costumes but still kept them pretty true to what they are. Elaboration, great. That's what you need in a remake. What you don't need is retcons. Like... Unless they're extraordinarily necessary, and most of the time they're not. Retcons aren't always great. Like, most of the time they're not great at all. Unless it's like taking something that already kind of sucked, you know? And turning it into something good. But generally, when I say retcons in series, especially the ones I play on this channel here, it's to... Well... Previous games may not have like fleshed things out or known exactly the direction they were going story-wise in the future, and like sometimes they've got a retcon, like developers have got a retcon stock to keep it consistent story-wise. That's fair. But like the remake of Lufia 2, that was a retcon, and I hated every second of it. I actually hate that game. I should play it one day. Maybe not on the channel, just in general, but like. Luffy was perfect the way it was, don't change stuff. Like, if you're gonna retcon stuff, make it consistent between 1, 2, and 3. Not like, overwrite the best game in the franchise. Because that's, that's not a Luffy game for Luffy fans. That's a Luffy game for making money off casuals. I ain't got no problem with casuals, man. Granny can play as much Wii Sports or Wii Bowling as she wants. I don't care about that. But, like, when you take a franchise that was built up by its niche audience and then direct the next game, not at the audience that got it there, but at some people that don't care, and they might play the game for that one entry, but then they won't care after that. And you're blindsiding all of the people that got a franchise there? Like, no, nah, man. Like, you can appeal to the casuals and other people that aren't necessarily fans. That's fine. But don't... Don't just, like... Bastardize the game. Almost. Like, you know... The people that are going to be buying that game on the name that they recognize first are people that grew up with the game that you're shitting on. Square Enix. <laughs> so don't do that. Because then people will remember the name with disdain. And the people that are new to playing the series, who don't care about the old games, will play it and be like, hey, that was fun. And then they probably won't care again, unless you're making, like, god-tier games, and, uh... That, uh... That 3D remake of Lufia 2? Pretty sure it was 3D. Yeah. Still mad. 
we could have like the Luffy franchise running strong right now, and instead that sort of stuff happens. At least Mana is back with a vengeance. That's fine. But yeah, Lupia, the Breath of Fire series, the Soul series. I'd love to see those return. Or at least just be modernized like the Mad Mana series is. So like newer players can play it, but like still appreciate what it was. But enjoy like, you know, current gen graphics, current gen like game mechanics, that sort of stuff. Like quality of life improvements that come just with uh, the industry progressing over time. I would love that, actually. Like Lufia, but with HD graphics instead. Like HD uh, pixels. Uh, not pixels. Sprites. HD sprites. I would love that. Love it. Don't know if I'd replay it on the channel, though. Not after doing 1 to 3 already. Oh, actual story. Man, I can feel the tiredness coming in. Sorry about the rambles, but uh, I do still kind of stand by what I said. Because <laughs> Lufia 1 to 3 is Lufia. They've got Ruins of Lore, and that's a bastardized spin off. It's trash. Anyway, Retrieve the Mermaid. Those were the Emperor's orders. You're still following me? You really don't know when to quit, freaky skeleton thing. I could always escape to the sea, but it's too close to the birdcage lighthouse. Anything hunting for mermaids would surely jump at the chance to catch a siren, right? If I lead him just a little further, then... <laughs> Flamshi, is that you? I want to apologize. Uh-oh. You, ghost. I give up. You can take me, alright? Hmm. You have that Imperial Order thingy, right? Come on, what are you waiting for? Your Majesty, the Deathbringer. I shall hasten to your side. Flamshi? Huh. I swear I heard her just now. The flowers she was carrying, and what is that smell? Something dark and ominous that reeks of terror. Something must have happened to her. Don't worry, Flamshi. I'm coming for you. Man. The Bewitching Bargain. Interesting. Use Super Armor to dodge attacks and to be immune to knockback. Okay, can I just use Super Armor, can I? Yeah, they definitely balance the mechanics a lot better. Ooh. The Cenus. A remedy strong enough to kill even him. This next experiment will surely succeed. Oh, she's a mummy doctor. <laughs> so we meet again, Siren. You know what it looks like? It looks like a uh, Moon Knight crossed with Angemon. <laughs> and a doctor. So we meet again, Siren. What brings you here? Do you long to sing again? Or perhaps you have come to collect that lovely voice of yours? Witch of Reincarnation, I come seeking answers. The sinister scent that clings to this flower, where does it come from? Hmm. This scent is that of a soldier of the Deathbringer. Why do you seek him out? He captured my mermaid friend. A mermaid? How intriguing. So he couldn't wait on the remedy and instead set his sights on a mermaid's flame. What do you mean? When a mermaid is deprived of water far enough from the sea, she will burst into flame and assume the form of, an, of Anima Solar. Such flame is capable of destroying everything it touches, even its bearer's soul and memories. With it, the Undying Emperor could finally achieve the eternal rest he so desperately seeks. No, Flamshi. Please tell me where I can find him. I won't let that happen to her. 
very well, on one condition. Though I care not whether he succeeds, allow me to accompany you. I must see his long sought after desire through to its conclusion. If that's truly all you wish, but I can't carry you there, not with these withered wings of mine. That door, it is the portal to the Deathbringer's palace. Should you be able to trick it, it shall lead you straight to him. Huh, trick it? How? With your song. Your voice has the power to sink Imperial warships, does it not? Yes, that is correct. Child, I shall return your voice to you. What say you? Does your own singing still frighten you? It's true. When my song sunk the vessel to the into the ocean, I was afraid. I longer, no longer had a use for such a frightening thing. So I sold it to you, but I did not accept what you tended in return. With the human arms you offered, I could have lived without the need to sing, and without worrying, Flamshi. But I couldn't give them up. Not the wings Flamshi so cherished and lavished such praise upon. But she was right. I've been wishy-washy lately, not to mention selfish. So I'll sing. I'm a siren after all. It's like she always said, sirens are born to sing. So sing I shall, and save my friend while I'm at it. Good. Ooh, one withered wings. Just a little longer, Flemshi. I'm almost there. Oh dear, can't get involved in that right now. <laughs> Just one of my friends being silly. A goof, if you will. I knew I had saw that night before. I feel like... You remember earlier in the last episode, when that ice witch was talking about the soul of the Jumai that got shattered? I feel like that knight is supposed to represent him, or he is one of them. Man, these uh, whole new levels aren't really getting a workout. They could definitely use the HD treatment, though. They seem a bit pixelated -y. I mean, compared to the characters themselves. Now, it's annoying because there's currently an event at the moment and you can get a five-star Sheiks from Secret of Mana. Um, but it seems like they've brought in like a... Uh, like a drip feed thing. Because I did it all and I was top 50. It's been a few days and all the cheaters have come in. There aren't that many cheaters. They, like, get them pretty quick. But, like, they're usually pretty obvious. Like, a million damage. Really. Like, that sort of stuff. But they always come in near the end of, event, of an event to try and, like, steal all the rewards. So, what they've done, essentially, is make the rewards currency to deter people from doing that. But it also seems like they're just not going to give you much. So, like, 
I was top 50 and I would have gotten 50 of whatever this currency is. Now I'm rank 80, so I'm only going to get 10. Now, what's the bet that Sheiks is going to cost 200? I'm calling it now. So I'm really looking forward to having to do... Having to get top 80 in another 20 ranked events to be able to get one version of that character, if that is the case. Hopefully not. Hopefully 10 is all we need. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just basing that off every other event ever. Yeah. Well, generally they don't give you an event for ranking. Uh, uh, don't give you um, a currency for rank-related events. Usually it's just the event you rank, and then when it's done, you get your rewards. So it's going to be interesting, to say the least. I think this is going to be a shorter episode. We'll still try and do the hard mode. I'll probably avoid the very hard, because, like, we tried the very hard last episode, and it was just futility. Your Majesty. That which you sought now swims in the tank before you. Whoa, look at Deathbringer. Well done, Thona. To heed my orders even in death. You are the very image of a warrior. So, this is a mermaid, the one that can fulfill my desire. I thank you so graciously for providing me with a tank. Now what do you plan to do with me? And don't tell me you believe nonsense like the flesh of a mermaid will grant immortality. Fool, I would never wish such a fate again. Behold the monstrosity before you, my reanimated corpse, for I am already deathless. In my current form, I cannot die. All that I seek now is eternal slumber. Ugh, talk about depressing. Remind me what this dream of yours has to do with me. I'm nothing special, you know, nothing like a siren. And all the better for it, for inside you, mermaid, dwells a flame. A flame to burn even purgatory itself. Now, mermaid princess from Waters Deep, summon forth that flame. Send me into that eternal night. Flamshi! El, what are you doing here? Flamshi, are you alright? Hang in there. I'm fine, but... Being outside the tank, my scales started to dry out. Huh? What's happening? My body, it's he heating uh, uh The mermaid deprived of water. So it has already begun. All of the trespassers that could have entered my palace. The seeness is that you. Long have you toiled, but no more. Witness my undoing. It burns my tail, my heart. Anima Sola, come forth, I beseech you. Burn brightly this hideous twisted form. <laughs> she doesn't die. I don't imagine being on fire would be very good. Oh, oh. Flamshi. Stay back. Touch her hand and your very bones will be turned to ash. But she's in pain. I can't just sit back and watch her suffer. Ah! <laughs> Indeed, those crimson flames burn even their possessor, yet the Deathbringer. Impossible. It can't be. This flesh of mine refuses to yield, even in this inferno of anima sola. What futile fire. Worthless creature, your, use your usefulness has come to an end. Prepare to die. No! How unsightly. 
Get out of my way, unless you wish to perish first. Though death may forever be out of my grasp, I have no qualms with doling it out. Wow, poor Flamshi. Bone ash fire. No wonder you wouldn't have a memory. You'd be too busy screaming in pain. Well, at least the basic version of Deathbringer will go down like real easy. Also, uh, Papoy's over 9,000 now. Over 9,000! <laughs> Soon he'll be over 10. Or she? Or they? I don't know. Who cares? Irrelevant. It doesn't matter. This is going to be brutal because, uh, look at his weaknesses. <laughs> Sumo and Durin are his weaknesses. Damn, son. Frickin' rickety wrecked. So we got Dark Knight, the three-star variant, up to six-star. And we've got Durin, Fire Durin, up to six-star. And then we've got... Um, Randy, Light, also 6-star. So basically, I'm trying to make a dedicated sword guy for each element. Now we've got a Dryad Swordsman now. We've got um, Elazul. I'm pretty sure that's who it was. Yeah, Elazul. But sadly, he's only uh, not even 1-star. He's just fresh character. No ranking, so... I guess that's better than nothing, but yeah. Wouldn't mind a, uh... At least, like, a stand-in for a, uh... A Lunar Swordsman, I guess. You can ascend to allies of any rarity to the highest rarity through training. Uh, yeah, no. I got so many, uh, silvers and golds now. I'm mostly just, like, saving characters to, uh, rank up characters into four star. Ah, the scorching heat racks my body with pain. Yet I, I. So even the unquenchable fire of the anima solar cannot kill you. My poor husband, what cruelty is this? Even I lack the means to grant you eternal peace. Flamshi, please witch. Restore my friend. I'm afraid that is beyond me. Is there real, really nothing you can do? I can't bear to watch this any longer. There is only one thing that can quench those, those flames. It is for the one she holds dearest to burn in them. The one she holds dearest? That, that can't be me. Because all I do is trouble her in grief. I can't stand to see you like this, but once again I'm powerless to help. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry, Flamshi. But even still, I can't just watch you suffer. If you burn under the heat of your own flame, then I wish to burn at your side. You did all that you could to help me, so as your friend... I will not let you suffer alone. L. Flamshi. Thank the high winds, it worked. But L, your wings! Because of me, they're ruined. I try so hard to cure them, yet I couldn't do anything in the end. <laughs> How funny. I just said the same thing. Why are you laughing right now? You're about to die. Thesenus, Witch of Reincarnation, make a deal with me. Please, release her from these flames. Save her. 
And what will you give me in exchange? My tail and her wings. That is not enough to keep death at bay. Your bond as well. The feelings you have for one another, the beautiful memories you share, that is my asking price. When next you should awaken, you will no longer be mermaid and siren. You will not recall one another. So too shall you live separate lives. Whatever the price, we will always find our way back to each other. Of that, I have no doubt. Because they're friends! Very well. Hey, Flemshi. Will you still be my friend even though I'm not a siren? Huh? Ellie, what are you... You were so sure of yourself earlier, yet you're still worried about that? Sorry, I... Yes, I guess so. Silly right. Are you daft? Wings or no, you'll always be my precious friend. An actual end to Flamshi's story. I remember her from Legend of Manor. Uh, Legend of Manor. <laughs> and thus ends our tale of Siren and Mermaid. Why, you ask? Because from that moment on, they each possess two arms and legs. And so we draw to a close, for what followed after is not my story to tell. But we are but tiny fragments in the memory of Manor. And through legend, our stories shall always live on. What comes before and what lies ahead, why, I cannot even say. However, word has reached me of a famous songstress in the city. They say her beautiful voice fills the plaza and garners coin and applause from all who pass by. Once all have returned home, a lone girl stands in the square. Each day she visits, looking hesitantly here and there, as though searching for someone. If you were to pluck the flower at your feet and bring it to her, perhaps it would grant her courage. The courage to approach the songstress with it. Ah, what do I speak of, you ask? Why, merely a fragment of memory capturing a glimpse of the world. Park Hill! Man, she had really cool looking scales. Poor Flamshi. Burning like that. That's actually kind of freaking horrifying of an end for a mermaid. What a spin on it, though. Like, too far away from water. And they burst into flames. That's fucking crazy. I guess I was able to do up to here. Huh. Let's just do this one. Yeah. If I can do this one relatively easy, I'm going to try the next one because he is weak to us and that's part of the reason why I couldn't get the very hard done in the last one because we don't have enough Dryad characters. The annoying thing is like the uh, other event, the ranking one I was talking about earlier, that boss is weak against Luna. What are the Luna characters I have? Oh yeah, my two-star frickin' uh, honeycomb that they gave me at the beginning of the game that I've maxed out, but it's still useless. You guys wanna actually fight? Oh, shouldn't have done that. Oh, well. That doesn't look good. Oh, 
Come on, get him down! Why are these attacks not even hitting? Ugh, so annoying. I was attacking, just wasn't hitting. Giant boss with a tiny hitbox. It doesn't help that full auto just decides to mess with stuff. Fact. Had enough of that shit. Come on, Jiren, use your thingy. He wants to die, man. Just let him. <laughs> he likes it. <laughs> yeah, it's fine if I stand back there now. Now it's inside the hitbox. Deathbringer not being able to die. Yeah, I don't think we're going to actually be able to fight the higher difficulty of that, because I kind of thought he would go down a lot easier. I guess that is the difficulty of the one that we couldn't do last episode, so... Rip. And the next one's just ridiculously higher, if I'm pretty sh If I'm correct, I'm pretty sure. Okay, well, I'm not going to bother doing that because that's 2,000 higher. That's ridiculous. Okay, so... I guess now I can show off some of the stuff that we got. So let's go to memory gems first because... Before last episode, it had been like two, three, two months since I recorded. We've unlocked and maxed out a bunch. As you can see, which was the one from this event though? This level one... Ah... So these two are new. Actually, I better put a lock on them. This one is for the uh, for a login bonus for the current new chapter zero. That'll be next episode. Ooh, damage taken, negative twenty. Uh, <laughs> let's do that now. Yeah, I, I hoard my uh, upgrade mats like crazy. And only use them on stuff that I know that I'm meant to. Slowly getting through this stuff. Uh, what was this one? Stat damage plus 15% and mega spirit damage plus... Ooh, moon. Ooh. That's actually really good. That is freaking cute. I would really like a freaking four-star duffel. That would be nice. Um, all right, so where is... I feel like it was... Four-star one. Oh, it must be literally this one. I think it is. Yeah. 
Yeah, the teardrop crystal. Okay, so special technique, recover MP plus two. That's not great, but it is maxed out and it's level 60, so we actually have two maxed out memory gems now. We got that one from the Secret of Mana 1 event, the uh, Randy one, who he just equips that forever, because that's his, essentially. But yeah, aside from that, like, we've cleaned up on the gems, man. Like, a lot of them are getting close to maxing out, but uh, since this is a shorter episode, Let's have a look at what I did with the allies. So it wasn't that long ago that I was like, oh, they're coming along. We got a lot of five stars and three six stars now, but like every character is as max as they can be so far. And most of them have maxed out their mana boards. But uh, every character that I've gotten is leveled up as high as they can go and like this let me let me show you like any silver or bronze star character like bronze star character like early quilto or like silver star characters like uh raxa here and uh duffel in them they've all been uh max ranked and they're all the highest level they can be but the two star guys i don't think i've maxed out their mana boards but three star and above yeah and look at how far until we get to three star and the reason for that is because every character that I have is four star and above <laughs> did you think I was screwing around with the grinding it actually goes lower because I didn't realize that we got Kevin and freaking uh freaking Durin down here but yeah and all of these golds are doubles because those characters are all maxed so essentially what I'm doing is you can see here that Julius is level 50 I'll be getting uh, probably three other characters to level 50 as well and then I will be going down to where are the two star Nitwit icons, because that's what you want to go for. Where's the Nitwit? Where's the Nitwit icons at all? Apparently, I don't have any. Okay, weird. Um, yeah. So, <laughs> what I would do is I would get to the bronze Nitwit icons, right? You get those, and then you just use your books on them. I think uh, you get them to level fifteen, and then you can use two silver, uh, one other. Nitwick icon to get it to silver or two star. Then you level that up to 30. No, wait, I've screwed this up. <laughs> Either way, you use the Nitwick icons, okay? I cannot stress that enough. Use your crappy silvers here to level up your Nitwick icons. Use your, like, leveling books, not for characters, but to level up your Nitwick icons. When you go from bronze Nitwick icon to silver Nitwick icon, to gold then when they're gold and I think they're gold at level 30 yeah but then you have to level a gold character to level 50 to get them up to four stars so you get your nitwit icons up you get a bunch of gold gold stand-in character equivalents and then you get your level 50 character and you just feed them full of your your trash basically you recycle all of this this looks like a lot, right? Yeah. Two days, that's going to be gone. <laughs> it actually will, though. It actually will. And who's going up levels next? I think it actually might be that Reese character that we equip equipped before. Yeah, there she is. Yeah, she's going up next. The last character that went up was... I think it was actually uh, Elazul. This is my Dryad Swordsman, by the way. I only have, uh, I think I only have two Dryad characters as well, so, yeah. Having a four-star Dryad character is freaking amazing. Having a four-star Dryad character that uses a sword, yeah, that's pretty freaking cool too. Now, if only it would load. There we go. Oh, he can get up another five levels. Nice. Oh, that's right, because I already got him up to four, five-star. I forgot about that. Yeah. I'm going to level him up some more. 
But yeah, Elazul, Dryad Swordsman. Very pleased with that. You know what I would have really loved though is Gemma to be a character. And Bogard. Uh, who else is new? And the other characters that I maxed, uh, that I got up to five star were these two event characters on either side of this clicking here. Max them up. Um, oh yeah, Durin and um, Prim got the five star treatment because I didn't have a have a flame swordsman, so Durin will fill that role very well. And then, man, we got both of the, these two dudes, uh, archer dudes, up. Ah, yes, and we finally got, um, yeah, we're getting that. But new character-wise, do I have any other new characters? I don't know if I do. Oh, yes. How could I frickin' forget? Look who we finally got. We finally got a... Lady Black Pearl. It's about frickin' time. We now have two uh, Wisp or Lumina Axe users now, because Shiloh uses an Axe as well. But we got to look at one more character because we've got uh, what's his name again, uh, and where is he? Ferric from uh, Children of Mana, right here, over the right hand side, is friends with Wanderer up here, who is also from Children of Mana, and. Ferric needs to go up to five stars, so he'll probably be going up pretty soon. But now we have Tamba. Hell yeah, dude! That's nearly the whole party, like the whole main four party from uh, Children of Mana. So I think what's the last dude? Pockin or something like that? He's just this little dude. Yeah, so, like, we're only missing him. And I'm sure there'll be, like, side characters and stuff like the... What was he, his name? Like, the Mana Knight or something like that? That was, like, yeah, but... There's a bunch of side characters and NPCs and stuff. Yeah, I can't remember them off the top of my head. I did play a bunch of uh, Children of Mana. So did a few people watching this. Friends of mine that I played Children of Mana with! I'll never forgive those horrible gem boards. Can't wait to do that on episode one day, and I will be doing that. <laughs> Alright, but, yeah, pretty much just went ham on grinding. Like, I noticed a few times that it was like, hey, wait a second, that seems like very uh, exploitable grinding that I can use on auto. <laughs> and here we are, the fruits of my labor. And to really just, like, drive home the fruits part... Keep in mind that I was, I was bitching a lot because I was like, gated out of higher strength and power. So first they gave us those benevolent icon things down here, above this. Uh, that lets us uh, rank up. That's nice. Then they gave us these awakening orbs as well. It was actually the other way around. We got the orbs first, and that lets you level to 100. But when they added those tonics, man, the tonics were the game changer. So, training, daily quest, tonics, hard mode, do it every day, every day, and you too will become a brute. You, can, you max out how much tonics you can use, but that's going to be a massive buff. Um, and also, the high level stuff, I haven't really done any... Uh, Gringham Rift Spire, although that's how you get a uh, Fanha from Secret of Mana, so it's cool that they're giving away Sheiks as well, because then we'll have those two. And I've already got Thanatos, so uh, just missing Geshtar and Vandal if we get uh, Fanha. And I haven't even tried the Deviant Fruit because it's all 9,000 plus, although now we're 9,000 plus, so we might try that for an episode. We'll see how we go. But Twillwool Tower! I kind of just wrote it off for a really long time. I was like, that shit's just too hard for us. But now we're up to floor 88 and 89. 
and it's been S rank until the very last one. And I auto this, I haven't even been paying attention. So like, all the way up to 89, just because I leveled those characters over 10,000. So, uh, yeah. Finally, finally broke through that barrier, and it essentially like gave us a path to get even stronger because now we can rank up, uh, we can rank up Sumo, Papoy, and Durin two more times each, and then we can star them up another time on top of that as well. And in doing that, we'll unlock more mana board stuff for them, so they'll get higher leveled again, and then. <laughs> I haven't even maxed out their uh, tonics, I've just put a bunch of them into them. So I'm pretty sure that they can probably get to like 12,000 each, at least. I'm feeling it, like just the the way that it's like scaled, you know, like it just really kind of feels like we can probably make that. So yeah, less bitching about high-end stuff for whales. Thank goodness for that, right? But also, Less pay to win. This game is vastly more balanced. It's like they finally freaking listened. And now, I can recommend this. I should... I really should recommend it. I feel like... I'm definitely glad I started playing on day one, because if I started playing now, I would have missed a bunch. But if they start rotating those old events back in, like... It's fine. And, uh... Because they've balanced it a lot better, people are going to have a much better time going through the story. So I don't know if you guys would have seen, because I'm pretty sure I did this off screen as well, but uh, go back to season one. So we've got very hard mode down to chapter six and hard mode down to chapter eight. But all of this is complete now. Like I went back and S ranked everything. And then I went into training, and everything that has a completed stamp is S ranked and completed. Still gotta do gear dungeons. I think I, could, I did one. I feel like I did one. No, I didn't do one. Oh well. Damn. But yeah, we really uh, went ham on it. So I guess next episode we will start. Um, we'll continue the story onwards. Chapter 0 for season 2. Seems like backstory. Looks like we're going to be going into the False Goddess's backstory, so I'm looking forward to that a lot, because I've been waiting freaking ages! Alright, well, anyway, I'm going to call out an episode there. If you like what you saw, like, comment, and subscribe. Ring that notification bell to stay up to date with episodes, and until the next episode of Echoes of Mana, you've been watching Dude Go Back, and I've been Shade Orion. Thanks for watching, everyone.